A gas turbine, also called a combustion turbine, is a type of continuous and internal combustion engine. The main elements common to all gas turbine engines are, an upstream rotating gas compressor, a combustor, a downstream turbine on the same shaft as the compressor. A fourth component is often used to increase efficiency on turboprops and turbofans, to convert power into mechanical or electric form on turboshafts and electric generators, or to achieve greater thrust-to-weight ratio on afterburning engines. The basic operation of the gas turbine is a Brayton cycle with air as the working fluid, atmospheric air flows through the compressor that brings it to higher pressure, energy is then added by spraying fuel into the air and igniting it so that the combustion generates a high temperature flow. This high temperature pressurized gas enters a turbine, producing a shaft work output in the process, used to drive the compressor, the unused energy comes out in the exhaust gases that can be repurposed for external work, such as directly producing thrust in a turbojet engine, or rotating a second, independent turbine known as a power turbine that can be connected to a fan, propeller, or electrical generator. The purpose of the gas turbine, determines the design so that the most desirable split of energy between the thrust and the shaft work is achieved. The fourth step of the Brayton cycle cooling of the working fluid is omitted, as gas turbines are open systems that do not reuse the same air. Most gas turbines operate on an open cycle in which air is taken from the atmosphere, compressed in a centrifugal or axial flow compressor, and then fed into a combustion chamber. Here, fuel is added and burned at an essentially constant pressure with a portion of the air. Additional compressed air, which is bypassed around the burning section and then mixed with the very hot combustion gases, is required to keep the combustion chamber exit in effect, the turbine inlet temperature low enough to allow the turbine to operate continuously. If the unit is to produce shaft power, the combustion products mostly air are expanded in the turbine to atmospheric pressure. Most of the turbine output is required to operate the compressor, only the remainder is available to supply shaft work to a generator, pump, or other device. In a jet engine the turbine is designed to provide just enough output to drive the compressor and auxiliary devices. The stream of gas then leaves the turbine at an intermediate pressure above local atmospheric pressure and is fed through a nozzle to produce thrust. The simple gas turbine is classified into five broad groups, frame-type heavy-duty gas turbines, large power generation units ranging from 3 MW to 480 MW in a simple cycle configuration with efficiency of 30 to 39%. Aircraft derivative gas turbines, these are power generation units, which are prime mover of aircraft in the aerospace industry with efficiency of 35 to 45 percent. Industrial type gas turbines, in the range of 2.5 to 15 megawatts. Used extensively for compressor drive trains with efficiency of less than 30 percent. Small gas turbines, in the range from about 0.5 to 2.5 megawatts. They often have centrifugal compressors and radial inflow turbines with efficiency of 15 to 25 percent. Micro turbines, in the range from 75 to 650 kilowatts with efficiency of 15 to 20 percent. The combustion gas turbines being installed in many of today's natural gas fueled power plants are complex machines, but they basically involve three main sections, the compressor, which draws air into the engine, pressurizes it, and feeds it to the combustion chamber at speeds of hundreds of miles per hour. The combustion system, typically made up of a ring of fuel injectors that inject a steady stream of fuel into combustion chambers where it mixes with the air. The mixture is burned at temperatures of more than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The combustion produces a high-temperature, high-pressure gas stream that enters and expands through the turbine section. The turbine, turbine is an intricate array of alternate stationary and rotating aerofoil section blades. As hot combustion gas expands through the turbine, it spins the rotating blades. The rotating blades perform a dual function they drive the compressor to draw more pressurized air into the combustion section, and they spin a generator to produce electricity. Land-based gas turbines are of two types, one, heavy frame engines and two, aeroderivative engines. Heavy frame engines are characterized by lower pressure ratios typically below 20 and tend to be physically large. Pressure ratio is the ratio of the compressor discharge pressure and the inlet air pressure. Aeroderivative engines are derived from jet engines, as the name implies, and operate at very high compression ratios typically in excess of 30. Aeroderivative engines tend to be very compact and are useful where smaller power outputs are needed. As large frame turbines have higher power outputs, they can produce larger amounts of emissions, and must be designed to achieve low emissions of pollutants, such as NOx. One key to a turbine's fuel-to-power efficiency is the temperature at which it operates. Higher temperatures generally mean higher efficiencies, which in turn, can lead to more economical operation. Operation. Gas flowing through a typical power plant turbine can be as hot as 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit, but some of the critical metals in the turbine can withstand temperatures only as hot as 1,500 to 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Therefore, air from the compressor might be used for cooling key turbine components, reducing ultimate thermal efficiency. Let us discuss about timeline of development of gas turbine. In 1900 century Sanford Alexander Moss submitted a thesis on gas turbines. In 1903, Moss became an engineer for General Electric Steam Turbine Department in Lynn, Massachusetts. While there, he applied some of his concepts in the development of the turbo supercharger. His design used a small turbine wheel, driven by exhaust gases, to turn a supercharger. In 1903 a Norwegian, built the first gas turbine that was able to produce more power than needed to run its own components, which was considered an achievement in a time when knowledge about aerodynamics was limited. Using rotary compressors and turbines it produced 11 horsepower. In 1906, the Armengod Lemely turbine engine in France with a water-cooled combustion chamber. In 1910, Hallsworth Impulse Turbine Pulse Combustion achieved 150 kilowatts 200 horsepower. In 1913, Nikola Tesla patents the Tesla turbine based on the boundary layer effect. In 1920, the practical theory of gas flow through passages was developed into the more formal and applicable to turbines theory of gas flow past airfoils by a Griffith resulting in the publishing in 1926 of an aerodynamic theory of turbine design. In 1946, National Gas Turbine Establishment formed from power jets and the RAE Turbine Division to bring together Whittle and Hain Constance work. In Besnel, Switzerland the first commercial reheated recuperated unit generating 27 megawatts was commissioned. In 1947, a Metropolitan Vickers G1 Gatrick becomes the first marine gas turbine when it completes sea trials on the Royal Navy's NGB 2009 vessel. The Gatrick was an aeroderivative gas turbine based on the Metropolitan Vickers F2 jet engine. In 1995, Siemens becomes the first manufacturer of large electricity producing gas turbines to incorporate single crystal turbine blade technology into their production models, allowing higher operating temperatures and greater efficiency. In 2011 Mitsubishi Heavy Industries tests the first 60% efficiency combined cycle gas turbine the M501J at its Takasago, Hyogo, works. Theory of operation, in a real gas turbine, mechanical energy is changed irreversibly due to internal friction and turbulence into pressure and thermal energy when the gas is compressed in either a centrifugal or axial compressor. Heat is added in the combustion chamber and the specific volume of the gas increases, accompanied by a slight loss in pressure. During expansion through the stator and rotor passages in the turbine, irreversible energy transformation once again occurs. Fresh air is taken in, in place of the heat rejection. If the engine has a power turbine added to drive an industrial generator or a helicopter rotor, the exit pressure will be as close to the entry pressure as possible with only enough energy left to overcome the pressure losses in the exhaust ducting and expel the exhaust. For a turboprop engine there will be a particular balance between propeller power, power and jet thrust which gives the most economical operation. In a turbojet engine only enough pressure and energy is extracted from the flow to drive the compressor and other components. The remaining high-pressure gases are accelerated through a nozzle to provide a jet to propel an aircraft. The smaller the engine, the higher the rotation rate of the shaft must be to attain the required blade tip speed. Blade tip speed determines the maximum pressure ratios that can be obtained by the turbine and the compressor. This, in turn, limits the maximum power and efficiency that can be obtained by the engine. In order for tip speed to remain constant, if the diameter of a rotor is reduced by half, the rotational speed must double. For example, large jet engines operate around 10,000-25,000 rpm, while micro turbines spin as fast as 500,000 rpm. Mechanically, gas turbines can be considerably less complex than internal combustion piston engines. Simple turbines might have one main moving part, the compressor shaft turbine rotor assembly, with other moving parts in the fuel system. This, in turn, can translate into price. For instance, costing 10,000 for materials, the Jumo 004 proved cheaper than the Junkers 213 piston engine, which was 35,000, and needed only 375 hours of lower skill labor to complete including manufacture, assembly, and shipping, compared to 1,400 for the BMW 801. All this often makes the construction of a simple gas turbine more complicated than a piston engine. Moreover, to reach optimum performance in modern gas turbine power plants the gas needs to be prepared to exact fuel specifications. Fuel gas conditioning systems treat the natural gas to reach the exact fuel specification prior to entering the turbine in terms of pressure, temperature, gas composition, and the related WAB index. The primary advantage of a gas turbine engine is its power-to-weight ratio. Since significant useful work can be generated by a relatively lightweight engine, gas turbines are perfectly suited for aircraft propulsion. Creep a major challenge facing turbine design, especially turbine blades, is reducing the creep that is induced by the high temperatures and stresses that are experienced during operation. 
Higher operating temperatures are continuously sought in order to increase efficiency, but come at the cost of higher creep rates. Several methods have therefore been employed in an attempt to achieve optimal performance while limiting creep, with the most successful ones being high-performance coatings and single-crystal superalloys. Using TBC's limits the temperature exposure of the superalloy substrate, thereby decreasing the diffusivity of the active species typically vacancies within the alloy and reducing dislocation and vacancy creep. It has been found that a coating of 1 to 200 micrometers can decrease blade temperatures by up to 200 degrees Celsius 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Bond coats are directly applied onto the surface of the substrate using pack carburization and serve the dual purpose of providing improved adherence for the TBC and oxidation resistance for the substrate. Further detail about types of gas turbine jet engines, air breathing jet engines are gas turbines optimized to produce thrust from the exhaust gases, or from duct fans connected to the gas turbines. Jet engines that produce thrust from the direct impulse of exhaust gases are often called turbojets, whereas those that generate thrust with the addition of a duct fan are often called turbofans or rarely fan jets. Gas turbines are also used in many liquid fuel rockets, where gas turbines are used to power a turbopump to permit the use of lightweight, low-pressure tanks, reducing the empty weight of the rocket. Turboprop engines. A turboprop engine is a turbine engine that drives an aircraft propeller using a reduction gear. Turboprop engines are used on small aircraft such as the General Aviation Cessna 208 Caravan and Embraer EMB 312 Tucano military trainer, medium-sized commuter aircraft such as the Bombardier Dash 8 and large aircraft such as the Airbus A400M Transport and the 60-year-old Tupol F-295 Strategic Bomber. Aeroderivative gas turbines are generally based on existing aircraft gas turbine engines and are smaller and lighter than industrial gas turbines. Aeroderivative gas turbines, aeroderivatives are used in electrical power generation due to their ability to be shut down and handle load changes more, more quickly than industrial machines. They are also used in the marine industry to reduce weight. Common types include the General Electric LM2500, General Electric LM6000, and aeroderivative versions of the Pratt & Whitney PW4000 and Rolls-Royce RB211. Amateur gas turbines, increasing numbers of gas turbines are being used or even constructed by amateurs. In its most straightforward form, these are commercial turbines acquired through military surplus or scrapyard sales, then operated for display as part of the hobby of engine collecting. In its most extreme form, amateurs have even rebuilt engines beyond professional repair and then used them to compete for the land speed record. The simplest form of self-constructed gas turbine employs an automotive turbocharger as the core component. A combustion chamber is fabricated and plumbed between the compressor and turbine sections. More sophisticated turbojets are also built, where their thrust and light weight are sufficient to power large model aircraft. The Schreckling design constructs the entire engine from raw materials, including the fabrication of a centrif centrifugal compressor wheel from plywood, epoxy, and wrapped carbon fiber strands. Several small companies now manufacture small turbines and parts for the amateur. Most turbojet-powered model aircraft are now using these commercial and semi-commercial microturbines, rather than a Schreckling-like home build. The following are advantages and disadvantages of gas turbine engines. First discuss advantages, very high power to weight ratio compared to reciprocating engines. Smaller than most reciprocating engines of the same power rating. Smooth rotation of the main shaft produces far less vibration than a reciprocating engine. Fewer moving parts than reciprocating engines results in lower maintenance cost and higher reliability availability over its service life. Greater reliability, particularly in applications where sustained high power output is required. Waste heat is dissipated almost entirely in the exhaust. This results in a high-temperature exhaust stream that is very usable for boiling water in a combined cycle or for cogeneration. Lower peak combustion pressures than reciprocating engines in general. High shaft speeds in smaller free turbine units, although larger gas turbines employed in power generation operate at synchronous speeds. Low lubricating oil cost and consumption. Can run on a wide variety of fuels. Very low toxic emissions of CO and HC due to excess air, complete combustion, and no quench of the flame on cold surfaces. Construction-wise a gas turbine power plant is much simpler than a steam turbine power plant. The size of a gas turbine power plant is smaller than that of a steam turbine power plant. A gas turbine power plant does not have any boiler-like component, and hence, the accessories associated with the boiler are absent here. It does not deal with steam hence it does not require any condenser hence no cooling tower-like structure is needed here. As design and construction-wise gas turbine power plants are much more straightforward and smaller, the capital cost and running cost are quite less than that of an equivalent steam turbine power plant. The constant loss is quite smaller in gas turbine power plant compared to a steam turbine power plant because in the steam turbine power plant boiler has to run continuously even when the system does not supply load to the grid. 
A gas turbine power plant can more instantly be started than an equivalent steam turbine power plant. Disadvantages, core engine costs can be high due to use of exotic materials. Less efficient than reciprocating engines at idle speed. Longer startup than reciprocating engines. Less responsive to changes in power demand compared with reciprocating engines. Characteristic whine can be hard to suppress. The mechanical energy created in the turbine is also utilized to run the air compressor. Since a major portion of mechanical energy created in the turbine is utilized to run the air compressor the overall efficiency of gas turbine power plant is not as high as an equivalent steam turbine power plant. Not only have that, the exhaust gases in gas turbine power plant curry significant heat from the furnace. This also causes the efficiency of the system low further. To start power plant pre-compressed is required. So before actual starting of the turbine air should be pre-compressed which requires an auxiliary power supply for starting a gas turbine power plant. Once the plant is started there is no more need of supplying external power but its starting point external power is essential. The temperature of the furnace is quite high in a gas turbine power plant. This makes the system lifespan smaller than that of an equivalent steam turbine power plant. Because of its lower efficiency, a gas turbine power plant cannot be utilized for commercial production of electricity instead it is normally used to supply auxiliary power to other conventional power plants such as hydroelectric power plant.